Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, my dear students of uh, first secondary. Uh, today we continue our uh, question solving questions on uh, nucleic acids. We reach question number 11. Uh, question number 11 says, choose if you know that coronavirus COVID-19 consists of nucleic acid or NE. Nucleic acid or NE. Okay. In the light of these answers. In the light of these E answers. You remember the structure of RNA and in the light of these answers. We know that RNA, ribonucleic acid, consists of ribose sugar, phosphate group, and E nitrogenous base. Okay. And it is a single strand. Okay. And it is a trans. Uh, transcription of DNA it comes from the nucleus and go outside the nucleus, go to the cytoplasm. And we know that it is bentose sugar. Ribose is a bentose sugar, consists of five carbon atoms. Okay, and it carbon five carbon atoms and also five oxygen atoms. If you remember, uh, so we go to the the choices. The chemical formula of sugar that is present in RNA nucleotides forming the virus is. Uh, number A, C5H10O5 may be correct because uh, may be correct because A, C5, bentose sugar. This is a correct answer because there is bentose sugar, C5. Right. Why don't we say this also is correct? This one is correct. We have C5 here. Uh, we have C5, but this is wrong. Why? Because we have here C5, carbon, five carbon atoms, but here we have four oxygen atoms. Four oxygen atoms, that, this means the lack of one oxygen atom. This is a deoxyribose sugar, deoxyribose sugar in DNA. This is the structure of ATP, the ribose sugar in DNA, which is called deoxyribose sugar. And we have here six carbon atoms, so it is wrong. And we have here also six carbon atoms, also, also it is a wrong. So the correct answer will be A. The sugar in RNA will be C5H10O5. Uh, number two, which of the following contains nitrogen element in the component of RNA forming virus? Again, which of the following contain nitrogen element, nitrogen element in RNA -E virus? Uh, ribose, ribose contain. Does it contain uh, nitrogen? Of course not. Uh, deoxyribose? Of course not. We have here the ribose. You can see here the structure of ribose. Maybe this one. This is the structure of ribose. And this is the structure of deoxyribose. There is no nitrogen. So we have here, this one is wrong. And this one also is wrong. OK? Phosphate group. Phosphate group, we know its structure is PO4. Phosphate is PO4. There is no nitrogen. So we, we say also this one is a wrong. So the correct answer will be what? Adenine, of course. The correct answer will be adenine. This is the correct answer. Adenine contain nitrogen element because it is a nitrogen space. A or adenine contain nitrogen N. After that, we have question number 12. All the following enter the structure of the cell chromatin. The cell chromatin. You remember chromatin? We are talking about chromatin. We are talking about the nucleus of the cell, the chromatin, which is the chromosome. Chromatin. Uh, when the chromosomes are connected together, they, uh, they make chromatin, or the uh, chromosome together make the, the chromatin inside the nucleus of the cell. Okay, the chromatin or the chromosome contain DNA and protein. Okay, okay. Now the question: All the following enters the structure of chromatin except amino acids, RNA, DNA, monosaccharide. Of course, the answer would be what? Uh, chromatin doesn't contain E 
monosaccharide, of course, chromatin doesn't contain any monosaccharide. So here, the correct answer, chromatin, uh, chromatin doesn't contain monosaccharide, but it contains amino acid, maybe RNA, maybe DNA, but it doesn't contain monosaccharide. Let, let's move to the next question, number 13. From the opposite diagramic, our uh, diagrammatic figure, from the opposite diagrammatic figure, the part X represents. Let's look at it again, focus and watch it carefully. We have many circles. The bigger circle is the cell. There is a smaller circle is nucleus, the nucleus inside the cell. The smaller one is chrom chromosome. Yeah, a chromosome inside the nucleus. And there is another circle here. And there is finally the circle of X. So what inside the chromosome? Inside the chromosome, there is DNA and protein. What inside DNA? Yes, of course. The answer would be gene. It is what inside DNA? Not nucleus, not uh, nucleotide, not DNA. The answer would be gene. Because this circle will be DNA. This circle, which it doesn't give an, a name, this may be DNA. The circle here between chromosome and G. This may be D and A. So DNA contain what? Contain genes. The parts of DNA are called genes. So X circle represents a circle smaller than DNA, which is the gene. Okay. Okay. If we make another circle here in the middle, you know, it will be what? Maybe it, it will be nucleotide. It will be nucleotide. If we make another circle, a smaller circle, because the nucleotide is a part of gene. The gene is made of many nucleotides, okay? So X will be gene. Let's move to the next question. When a living cell from topaco plant leaf grows in a nucleative medium, Okay, يا ورقة من نبات التبغ نمت كبرت يعني في في وسط مغذي نترف ميديا وسط مغذي containing radioactive nitrogen إيه عنصر ال A النيتروجين المشع radioactive nitrogen N15 ال N العادي على فكرة N14 لكن عشان هو 15 ده يعتبر radioactive يعتبر إيه radioactive إنه هو إيه مشع عنصر إيه مشع أيزوتوب يسموه أيزوتوب طيب Badin, we find that all of the following structures contain radioactive nitrogen except. كل دول هيبقى فيهم نيتروجين ما عدا واحدة. نشوف كده. Number one, cell membrane. The cell membrane فيها إيه؟ آه ممكن فيها فوسفوليبيد. فيها كمان بروتين اللي هو كوليسترول. وفيها برضو كوليسترول. ها؟ فيها بروتين وفيها كوليسترول. فيها هنلاقي فيها نيتروجين لأن فيها بروتين. Cell membrane فيها بروتين. ممكن نلاقي فيها نيتروجين. طيب البيومين اوف سايتوبلاست اكيد في بروتين اللي هو اصلا امينو اسيد طيب السيل آه، وول اه السيل وول ده ممكن تكون هي دي الاجابه ليه؟ لان يعني السيل وول عباره عن سيلولوز سيلولوز ده ما فيهوش نتيجه السيلولوز ده عباره عن ايه؟ كربون وهيدروجين واكسجين عباره عن كار كومبلكس كار سيلولوز اه وبالتالي الاجابه هنا صحيحه الدي ان ايه طبعا في نتيجه يبقى الوحيد اللي ما فيهوش نيتروجين دازنت كونتين نيتروجين هو ايه؟ السيل وول. طيب نروح للسؤال اللي بعده. دي ان ايه سيميلار تو سيروكسين. دي ان ايه اند سيروكسين. وي نو سيروكسين هرمون سكريتد فروم سيروت جلاند. اند دي هاف فوسفورس ايلمنت. سيروكسين هاز فوسفورس ايلمنت. ذا بريزنس اوف وات ايلمنت؟ اه اوف كورس فوسفورس. فيري جود. ذا انسر ويل بي وات؟ ذا انسر ويل بي فوسفورس ايلمنت. فيري جود. ذيس از كوريكت. So the answer here is a phosphorus N. Uh, sorry, iodine element, iodine, not phosphorus. Cyroxine has iodine. Cyroxine has iodine element, not phosphorus. Uh, Cyroxine has iodine element, not, not phosphorus N. But phosphorus found in it, 
phosphorus found in him and uh, phosphorus is found uh, in casein, casein or milk protein. The milk protein contains phosphorus. Lacking uh, thyroxine contains e iodine. The correct answer is e iodine. Okay, let's move to next question. Number 16, which of the following matches with DNA in the elements that enter its structure? DNA match with what? Cellulose, fat, phospholipid, hemoglobin. Which of the following matches? Match or matches with DNA in elements that enter its structure? Ah, Yatara, cellulose, of course not. Yatara, fats, of course, not, not like DNA. They don't have the same enemy. Phospholipids, yes, phospholipids contain phosphorus, our phosphate group, phosphorus. So also DNA contain phosphate group. So the answer will be phospholipids. Very good, because they contain phos phosphorus element. But hemoglobin doesn't contain phosphorus element. Hemoglobin contain uh, iron element. So fats wrong. Cellulose wrong is the correct answer is a phospholipids. The last question, which of the following statement is wrong? Which of the following statement is wrong? Uh, DNA is double helix. Uh, DNA is double helix, is correct, not wrong. We will not choose it. A DNA contain thymine, of course, contain thymine. We will not choose it. It's not wrong, it's correct. RNA contain ribose. Yes, RNA contain ribose. RNA is always double helix. Oh, this is the correct answer. This is the answer because RNA is a single, not double helix. It is a single strand. It is a single A strand. Now we can move to study a new lesson. We are going to study the enzymes. I leave you to solve this question. Uh, you can continue solving questions and send me your answers. Uh, but we can start talking about enzymes. We can start talking about a enzyme or chemical structure of the living organisms. But uh, here we can talk about the chemical reaction, the chemical reactions in the living organisms, but chemical reactions, okay? You know that in your body, there is a lot of chemical reaction. In your body, there is a lot of chemical reaction. Like what? When you eat a food, when you eat food, okay, you start, your body start to digest the food. Digestion is a food, is a chemical reaction because you break down the large molecules of the food, okay, into simple ones. You break down the large molecules like proteins, carbohydrates, fats. You break them down into simple ones. Like protein, you break them, them into amino acids. Fats, you break them into fatty acids and the glycerol. Uh, carbohydrates, you break them into monosaccharide. So you break down, you make some chemical reaction to break down the larger molecules, change them into a small molecule. Or you break down the polymers and they change them, change them into a monomer and this is one of the chemical reactions in the human body chemical reaction in the human e body okay one of them is breaking down the large molecules to to make smaller molecules and this in this way breaking down the big molecules to make smaller molecules is called catabolism it is called Catabolism. When you break them down, when you break down the large molecules, maybe you release energy. Like what? Like when you burn glucose sugar, your body, uh, the food change into glucose sugar after digestion, and you start to burn glucose with oxygen. By the help of oxygen, you can burn glucose 
and release energy. So uh, this is also uh, breaking down on, of a molecule. This is also a catabolism reaction. So the catabolism reaction is a process of breaking down chemical bonds. Breaking down chemical bonds. Uh, between atoms of molecules, macromolecules, to extract the chemical energy stored in them. To extract the chemical energy stored in them. Like what, for example, we have a example here. We have a burning of glucose, uh, releasing energy from glucose oxidation. This is a type of reaction called a, a catabolism, okay? Or oxidation of glucose. Yeah, in respiration process, in cellular respiration, the food uh, after digestion combined with oxygen. And the food moved to all body cells by the blood and the oxygen moved to all body cells by the blood. And then the food meet with oxygen in all body cells in a part of the cell called the mitochondria. Then in this part of the cell, in this organelle, the food burns by the help of oxygen and a release energy. This process is called catabolism. So the first part of a reaction, or the, the, the reactions which happen inside the body, we can call all reactions happen inside the body, we can give them a name. What is the name? It is metabolism. The name will be metabolism. This includes all processes happen inside the body. It continues biochemical reaction takes place in all living cells. Metabolism, all biological A reactions, all biochemical reactions occur or take place in the living A cells. And we divide metabolism into two uh, parts or two types, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is the first one. Mean, meaning breaking down the large molecules into smaller one or to break them down into uh, to, to release energy. Breaking down molecules to release a energy. This is catabolism. And the opposite of catabolism is what? The opposite is anabolism. The opposite of catabolism is what? Anabolism. The meaning of anabolism what? Anabolism means a process of a using the simple molecules to build or to make a complex substance. Use the, the simple molecules to build the complex A substance. And we here, we don't release energy, but we consume energy. We need energy to build a new compound or new uh, macromolecule. Example of this, we have the protein synthesis. Synthesis of protein from amino acid. When we build protein from amino acids, we are making anabolism. And this is a way of polymerization process. The polymerization process is anabolism. And photosynthesis process to build food in the green plant also is anabolism. To build food, also it is a anabolism. You can uh, explain it very easy by this uh, figure. If we have here large molecules, A, B, and C, macromolecules, we have here, Macro molecules, for example, a uh, for example maybe uh, a mass for example protein, uh, and uh, b for example uh, lipids, c for example uh, carbohydrates. Then we eat the food contain these a uh, macro molecules. Then the body start to break them down digestion start digestion. We break them down into smaller molecules. Uh, like amino acids, the protein will change them into amino acids, okay? And uh, the fats will change them into fatty acids. The carbohydrates will change them into uh, monosaccharide. We have finally, uh, we produce smaller molecules, which are monomers. We make monomers. This process, breaking down the large molecule into smaller molecules, this is a catabolism. This is what? The catabolism. So the catabolism means breaking down the large molecule into smaller one and release energy. Finally, we re release energy. After burning of glucose, for example, we release a energy type. What would, ha would happen if we start building new large molecules again? If we start building new molecules again, 
if we start building new molecules again from the small ones, if we want to build muscles in our body or fats in our body. So here, D, we have large molecule D, large molecule uh, F, large molecule E. Maybe we have to make proteins, we have to make fats, we have to make a uh, carbs. So in the beginning, we'll start with proteins, fats, and carbs. We break them down into amino acids and fatty acids. and uh, monosaccharides, for example, monosaccharides. So we break down the large molecules and we make smaller ones. After breaking down the large molecules, we make smaller ones. This is catabolism. Uh, after using the smaller molecules to build larger ones, we make here anabolism. Building means anabolism. Now we are building new molecules, new large molecules from the simple molecules. Now we are making a, a proteins again, fats again, carbohydrates again. We make our macromolecules again, and this is anabolism. So breaking down is catabolism. Building up is anabolism. So they are opposite processes. They happen in your body. And together, they are called the metabolism. The chemical, biological reactions occur in your body, and, are they, and they are opposite to each other. If you have a small molecule and a large molecule, by anabolism, the small molecule changes into a large molecule by a by anabolism, like polymerization process. And by catabolism, you change the large molecule into a into small molecule. This is by catabolism. So they are a opposite uh, processes. After that, you are going to talk a little bit about enzyme. Uh, before we talk about uh, the enzyme, the enzyme maybe we'll talk it about it uh, in the next session. We fi finally talk about the importance of metabolism. The chemical reactions or the metabolism are very important in our body. They are necessary for growth of the body. We need anabolism to build our muscles, to build our bones, to build our body organs. And this is anabolism come by building the small molecules into large ones. And this is anabolism. And also it is important, it is necessary for repairing the damaged cells and tissues. Also anabolism, if somebody get hurt, yeah, injured, he need to make new tissues. This is also anabolism. And also it is necessary for obtaining energy required for vital activity. Obtaining energy, this is by burning of food or burning of glucose. And this is a, this is a way of chemical action called catabolism. We need also catabolism to get energy required for all vital activities. And also these reactions continue in all living organisms. Uh, stopping of these reactions lead to what? Uh, stopping of these reactions uh, lead to death. If somebody stop uh, metabolism or anabolism, he will be died. He will be dead. So importance of metabolism in the body. Metabolism is very, very important. They, they are very important in the growth. They are very important in repairing damaged cells and tissues. Uh, this is anabolism. And also important in require, uh, obtaining the required energy for vital activities. And this is catabolism. And if the anabolism and the catabolism stop, if the metabolism stop, the, the, living, organ, uh, the living organism will be, a, will be dead. Inshallah, in the next session, we'll discuss together a, the topic enzymes. We'll talk uh, in details about enzymes, inshallah, in the next session. Uh, until that, until we meet again, thank you and a goodbye. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.